Let's pick up at 1,000 feet above the ground where we have gently reduced power from the takeoff setting to normal climb power. If it's a pretty day, just follow the logical direction of turn to the initial heading, abiding by any traffic pattern posted for the airport. Remember, in visual conditions, traffic avoidance is up to us, and most collision problems come around airports, so do watch for and listen for other traffic. Use all the lights on the airplane, too. They make the airplane a lot easier to see on a grungy day and a little easier to see on a pretty day. If it's IFR and cloud flying, the published IFR departure procedures or the standard instrument departure would be flown. Do be aware that on a departure in Class G, uncontrolled airspace, terrain and obstruction avoidance on climb is up to the pilot until the airplane is in radar contact and at a controller's minimum vectoring altitude or at a published minimum altitude. If out in the boonies with no guidance, some pilots follow the procedure of flying the instrument approach backwards. Just do make sure the airplane has the climb capability to reach the published minimum altitudes on the approach. The same is true for standard instrument departures, some of which require a minimum climb capability in feet per nautical mile. Just for your information, if no departure procedure is specified, a climb rate of 200 feet per nautical mile is assumed. At 90 knots ground speed, that is but 300 feet a minute. Some pilots operating handbooks specify climbing at maximum available power, but most pilots opt to use a cruise climb power setting, which is quieter as well as easier on the engine. One thing to watch in the climb is ground speed to get some idea of the wind at various levels. A GPS has the most accurate ground speed, Loran is second, and the trusty old DME comes in last. 